for the Ramayana. And so I was telling uh, Swami Muktananda that I thought it was a little presumptuous for me because I'm not a Sanskrit scholar and I'm really not a great intellect about the Gita either. And he told me this story. Uh, Krishna, as you may or may not know, I'll tell you a little bit about Krishna soon, but Krishna at one stage of his incarnation as an avatar was this beautiful young blue boy. And there was a great um, student of the Gita, an old man and his wife, and he was so intent upon studying the Gita that he had stopped doing all of his work. He wouldn't do anything. And they were going without food. And the wife, his wife, was being very harsh on him, saying, you have a duty to go out and bring his food for the family, at least one or two meals a day. But he wouldn't listen. He'd just go off into the woods and study the Gita. And she kept pressing him and hounding and hounding and pressing. And she was making his life quite difficult, but he would escape to the woods to study the Gita every day. She's screaming at him as he left. And this one day he went out into the woods and he sat studying the Gita and he came across a line in the Gita which said, if you offer all of your devotion to me, says Krishna, you need worry about nothing in the world, it'll all be taken care of. And he thought, well, isn't that a peculiar line? I mean, here I'm totally devoted to the Gita, to Krishna, and here's my, my wife all freaked. And yet it says right here that if I am devoted to the Gita, everything will be taken care of. Why isn't everything being taken care of? At which point he underlined that sentence because he wasn't sure about it. At that moment, back at his house, there was a knock at the door, and the wife went to the door, and there was a young man standing there with bags of rice and dal, lentil and flour, long supply for many months. And uh, the wife said, what are you doing? What is this? He said, this is for the family of somebody who studies the Gita. And he brought in these big bags of food and she noticed as he was setting them down that on his chest, his shirt was open and there was a wound on his chest and there was blood coming out of the wound. And she said to him, what, what happened to you? And he said, oh, this was done to me. She said, who did this to you? He said, this was done to me by a man studying the Gita out in the woods. And he said no more and he left. Husband came back and he saw all the food and he asked his wife about it. And she said, but you know, she said this peculiar thing. She said, when I looked at him, there was blood coming out of this wound in his chest. And when we asked him what the wound was about, he said, it was done by a man studying the Gita out in the woods. And at this point, the old man realized what had happened and he passed out. He fainted. And Swami Muktananda said to me, you see, when the man had underlined, he, with doubt, the doubt had been the wound in Krishna. Swami Muktananda said, he said, you see, the Gita isn't a book about Krishna. The Gita is Krishna. The Gita is Krishna. And he said, you don't have to worry about teaching the Gita. That's none of your business. The Gita will teach itself. You know, Krishna will do it in spite of you. <laughs> so I have been taken off the hook by Swami Muktananda. And I uh, have no ashrams, no students, no trip. I'm a student. And what I've been doing in the past few years is feeling that it was my dharma, and we'll be discussing that term ad nauseum, uh, it is my dharma to support pure transmissions in America. Seems to be what my work is. So I've been doing benefits for Zen monasteries, for Hindu yogic ashrams, for Christian Benedictine monasteries, helping the Sufis, uh, making announcements for the Hasids. Because it seems to me that rather than everybody necessarily coming together in big holy man jams to become all one right away, it would be best for us to honor the purity of these transmissions and let the amalgam or the bubbling together or the soup be cooked inside each pilgrim, each one of us, rather than having the outer thing become all one a little too soon. Uh, I think.